Cross-validation is a commonly used technique where we can leverage all of our data and still generate a fair model evaluation. The first block represents our total data set. Every observation we have is represented in this orange block. Now in a traditional data split, we have two sets, a training test and a testing set. With cross-validation, we split our data into partitions, known as folds. These folds aren't immediately designated as training or testing. We want to pick how many folds we'll split our data into. Common sizes are 5 or 10, but that's to your discretion. You can see in this example, I chose to create 5 folds. Each fold will contain the same percentage of the total data. You will not see the same observation in two different folds. A given observation can only show up in one fold. What we do is create K models where K is the number of folds. So if I created 5 folds, as I have here, I will create 5 different models. In each model, I will test on a different fold, using the remaining folds as training data. So for example, if we look at model 1, you can see I will train my model on folds 2, 3, 4, and 5, and test my model on fold 1. For model 2, I will train on fold 1, 3, 4, and 5, and test on fold 2. So hopefully you get the idea. After building each model, I can evaluate the results on each model's test set. Here you can see I have returned the accuracy score of each model. Because I have built 5 models, I return 5 accuracy scores. The significance of cross-validation is I can average those scores to get a more accurate evaluation. In this case, I return a cross-validation accuracy of 80.8%. The most common reason we use cross-validation is in scenarios where we have a limited amount of data. Consider we have 100 observations in our data set. We want to use as many training observations as possible, considering we already have such a small data set. So let's say I choose a 90-10 data split, as I'm concerned with the model seeing enough data. From that standpoint, it makes sense. However, we would only be left with 10 observations to test our model. With such a small number, it is not reasonable to gauge the effectiveness of our model. With one group of 10 test observations, our model may look very strong if we got 9 correct, which represents a 90% accuracy. However, if we use a different 10 observations, maybe our model would have only gotten 6 right, and our model would seem pretty weak, returning an accuracy of 60%. There just isn't a big enough test set to make a fair assessment. That is why cross-validation can be so useful. In doing so, we can get a fair prediction for all 100 observations to improve the reliability of our results. So you may be thinking, okay, so now I have five models. I only want to use one model to make my predictions. How does that work? Well, we're not going to use one of the cross-validation models for predictions. Cross-validation is only for model evaluation, not for model building. Once we have a fair evaluation, we can go back to our full data set and train our model on 100% of the data, assuming the model doesn't require early stopping. If early stopping is required, you can train your final model with a traditional training and testing set. However, if you are performing early stopping, you are likely using a neural network, and if you are using a neural network, you likely have a lot of data, and thus it may not be necessary to use cross-validation. Regardless, cross-validation is a widely used technique and something you should understand when and how to implement.